what if you were out and about and you saw an angle there? You know, maybe you were saying, oh, what angle do you think those stairs are going up? What kind of angle do you think that airplane is taking off at? Just a, a wonderful mathematical question. You're trying to stump your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your friends. You're out and about in the day. But then they want you to prove it. They want you to say, well, how do you know it's that number? And, of course, today we have some clues to help us figure things out. And understanding, estimating, measure angles. And the key to this has to do with a clock. If we think about a clock, we see clocks every day, and, and it gives us an easy mental picture that we can put into our minds about angles. And it becomes an easier mental picture because we understand that a clock is a circle. And because a clock is a circle, it's 360 degrees. Now, since the circle is 360 degrees, and there are 60 minutes in a hour, that means that every tick on the clock is a 6 degree turn. So, if I was looking at a clock or imagining a clock, we could see the degrees appear and understand 6 degrees. Well, how does that help us? All right, let's take a look at this example here. We see that we have an angle BOC. Angle BOC, what would your estimate be for figuring this out? Go ahead, take a minute, jot down a number that you think. What do you think the measure of this angle right here is? Okay, hopefully you've taken that second and you, you've thought about that. Now, how can we use a clock to help us understand this? If we were to take a clock and kind of mentally put this angle into our clock, and you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can literally move the whole thing over and set it up and shop in the same principal way that it's there. And from here, you got to do a slightly larger amount of math than if we were to turn it. But from here, we can see it goes from here to about here, which is... Well, that's about five, another five, another five, a little bit more. So together, we would say, okay, maybe this is really, really close to a 90-degree angle because it's going five, five, then this little bit plus this little bit. Maybe that's a 90-degree angle because every five degrees is, I'm sorry, five minutes is five times six would be 30 degrees. So every five minutes is 30 degrees. Well... We can also look at it is if we can mentally turn our picture so that our ankle kind of looks like this. And look, we're very, very close to understanding that measure. But yeah, that looks like a 90 degree angle. And by this, we're pretty close. Okay, so we got a good mental estimate, a good mental guess by using a clock to help us do that. Now, of course, if you have the means, you can pull out your fancy-dancy protractor, and you can start measuring things. And, of course, using a protractor, you know that we're going to have to take the protractor, and we're going to have to line it up with the angle as seen just like this. And as we look at this, it's kind of interesting because here's our protractor, here's our line, Hopefully I haven't changed the lines. That would be embarrassing. It looks like the measure is actually 75%. Now you got to think, man, how are we off by that much? Because we were estimating. We were estimating. We were using a clock for, for our standard. However, it got us a much, much closer picture than if we were just saying guessing different kinds of degrees. But this is the picture that we want to use when it comes to estimating angles. Picture a clock understand how that clock works together with um, angles and then use that to help you estimate angles and then if you have the means you can check it against a protractor to find out if you're doing it correctly or not and you'll be doing some work with that today understanding how to estimate angles the other concept we're looking at 
is what's known as the distributive property. And the distributive property it is about distributing those pieces to a different section of the puzzle. What am I saying? Puzzle. My mind wandered for a minute there. Problem. Different part of the problem. Now that I've thoroughly confused you, let's just do it and we'll talk about what's going on here. In the past, we've looked at this idea. This is 2x, 2 times x. So it literally means you have an x plus an x, which is how you get 2x. Now, if I saw this expression, I would see that I would have 2x minus 3s. So I really have this expression, x minus 3 plus x minus 3. And to solve that, if I were to write that out in repeated addition, I would say, okay, x plus x is 2x, and negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. Okay, but do I really have to write it out every single time? And what happens when you get down here and you have an, you're multiplying by an x? What does that even mean? Well, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how we can use the distributive property to come away with this expression and in the end, do this in a simpler way. Distribution means we're going to take what's on the outside and we're going to apply it to the inside. Now we know that a number next to a parenthesis means multiply. However, because we have another symbol in here, we have to multiply by each individual part. So, to start, I'm going to take my 2, this 2 here, and I'm going to multiply by the x. 2 times x gives me, that's right, 2x. I've distributed that 2 to the x. But, as we can see, there is a second part. There's also a negative 3 in this problem. So I'm going to take this 2, and I'm going to use it again, and I'm going to multiply 2 times our negative 3. 2 times negative 3 gives an answer of negative 6. And just like that, I've taken this x minus 3, two of them, and I've distributed this 2 and simplified my expression to 2x minus 3. 6. All right, hopefully that's sinking in. Let's try it again. It says negative 2x plus 3. So we want to use a distributive method to solve this problem. So I'm going to take my 2. I'm going to first distribute to my first term, which is an x. Negative 2 times x gives me a negative 2x, right? Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. All right, the second time, I'm going to distribute my negative 2 to my positive 3. So I'm literally saying negative 2 times positive 3. Negative 2 times positive 3. We remember that when we multiply integers, we just multiply the integers as normal. 2 times 3, of course, is 6. Let me move this a little bit, it's 6, and it's a negative times a positive, so when the signs are opposite, we come away with a negative answer. And so in the end, we have a response of negative 2x minus 6. All right, it's your turn to try a couple samples then as you're distributing. So as you distribute, go ahead and, and work with this principle. And if it's just not clicking yet, come ready with a question. And we can talk a little bit more about this as we work through distributing with algebraic traits. All right, that's it for lesson 96.